Hello, this is Pastor Gene Kemp from San Jose Bio Baptist Church. Apparently, Steven Anderson, he got mad at me for one of my YouTube videos titled, Steven Anderson Lied to You and Believes in Works for Salvation. He says, this guy is a liar. I never said that sodomy is an unpardonable sin. If this idiot thinks it's work not to be a sodomite, then he is probably a F word himself. It is no temptation to normal people. What I actually taught is that being a sodomite is a symptom of someone who has already been given over to a reprobate mind, Romans 1. Since normal men have zero desire to be in intimate with another man and actually find the thought revolting, the Ro then Romans 1 explains how they got that way, by rejecting the Lord and being given over to a reprobate mind. He says, after that, what if I become a sodomite? Face palm. <laughs> what does he think people just accidentally become sodomites? Time to read Romans 1 again. It tells us how they got that way. Newsflash, Christians aren't tempted by homosexuality. It's gross to them. Okay, now there are several problems with this statement from Steven Anderson. The first problem, okay, he says that it's not works, all right, but he believes that what he calls repentance of sins or stop sinning, that that's a work. We can all agree if you stop smoking, drinking, you stop thinking the wrong thought, stop cursing, okay, come on, that's a work, right? Well, okay, if you stop sinning and that's a work, so homosexuality is not one of these sins then? Okay, so I guess homosexuality is not a sin, right? Of course it's included with that, all right? Homosexuality is part of the sin, so if you stop sinning, that includes homosexuality. Come on, that's what works. Now, number two, if he says that sodomy is not the unpardonable sin because he gives all these semantics and technical explanations, blah, 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 then let me just make it simplified for you. The sin of Romans 1, 26-27. When God gave them up to a reprobate mind, where men start to lust after other men, as a result of after rejecting God and committing other sins, that you become this state, okay? If you reach this state of sin, is that unpardonable? If that's unpardonable, then the Bible lied in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sins, okay? Now, third, can't God restore what he gave up? Of course he can. Even Romans 1, even if it said that God gave them up, that doesn't mean that he can't restore. God, of course, can restore what he gave up. Look at Romans 11, for example, and look at all the major prophets of the Old Testament. In the Old Testament of the major prophets, God gave up Israel. But if you look at Romans 11, that's temporary and God can restore them. All right, that's just one example, but you can look at many others. Now, number four, it's impossible for a Christian to be tempted with the worst kinds of sins. Then give me a chapter and verse on that. Oh, a saved Christian will never be tempted with homosexuality, or he will never reject God after he gets saved. Oh, really? So he can't be tempted with the worst kinds of sins? Give me a chapter and verse on that. Of course it's possible, because what he fails to understand is this. Of course, you can't commit the worst kind of sins like homosexuality, rejecting God, or other stuff immediately. It takes time, you see. But see, that's what happens. With little sin, it grows to bigger sins and even the worst kinds of sins. You see that? That's what temptation does. Here's one example, 1 Corinthians 5.1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles. So here's a sexual sin that's not normal, like homosexuality. It's not a normal sexual thing, okay? So here's one, that one should have his father's wife. You see, incest, wow. But you know what the Bible says right here? It says, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So with this particular individual who committed incest in the church, you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that even though his flesh was turned over, given up to Satan, yet his spirit is still saved. You see, here's his problem. The reason why it's not a struggle to me and you is because we never experience the kind of sins that would lead to homosexuality. But a lot of the addicts, you don't know what kind of background they went through that led them into that point where they can't help but lust after other men. That's why it became a mental problem, you see. 
here's the thing. I never got a heroin problem, all right? It's easy for me not to get into heroin. You know why? I never even did the small sins like smoking, drinking, and then leading to heavier drugs, heavier drugs into heroin. That's the same thing with homosexuality. You guys never went through, or Anderson never went through these kind of sins that would eventually lead to homosexuality. Man, it's a blessing to see homosexuals in those rehabs who have a lust problem after other men that they actually repented and received Christ for salvation. I had this one homosexual that he got saved, and after that he tried to bring all the other people to my classes, not the other Bible study classes, and then he tried to get them involved in the Bible study teaching. He was excited. He wanted to get involved in the church and sing. I had another homosexual who used to attend my church. He was passing out tracts against homosexuality. He didn't even believe the word using the word gay. He actually used the word sodomy and even queer. He passed that all out. Now, here's the thing. Those two men told me that they couldn't help but lust after other men. But what happened? Because of getting into the walk of the Spirit, they got the victory over it. And that's the thing. That's why it's so important to get strong in the spiritual walk. Because if you don't, you can get weaker and weaker and fall into the worst kinds of the sins of the flesh. And that's so easy for you and I who've grown up more in our spiritual walk compared to these homosexual addicts. Because of that, it's so easy for us to say, oh, we wouldn't get tempted with that. But here's the thing. If we were in their shoes where we never had that spiritual walk to begin with, that strong spiritual walk with God, you don't know what kind of sins that you and I'd be tempted with in our flesh. And Anderson better watch out because, man, you don't want to mess with that flesh and with that devil.